You're listening to K Love, your station for timeless love songs. This is Dedication Hour. I'm Haley. Give me a call. Gotta stay hydrated if I'm gonna use my soothing radio voice. You know, people call in to talk about the problems and ask me to play a song to lift their spirits. They can be anxious or angry or agitated, so I've got to. I've got to calm them with this smooth, whispery monotone. Works every time. It's a little strange, but it's worth it if it helps spread the love. Love is choosing to treat others the way you want to be treated. And we here at K-Love always treat our callers with, with love. Oh, I got a caller. Ooh. Hello, caller. You are on the air. This is Haley. What can I help you with? Yeah. Hello? Uh, hello? My name's Tyson, and, and I've got a problem. Well, you've come to the right place, Ty. Tell me all about it. I've been having trouble sleeping at night, and I'm not really sure what's wrong. I've got all these thoughts running mm-hmm. through my head, like what would happen if everyone in the world decided to jump in the air at the same time. Also, how come- Tyson! Yeah? Listen to my voice. Okay. Breathe. Okay. Feel better? Uh, a little. But there's still so many thoughts. Like, why is it breathing? And we're out of time. Such a long Here's word? a song to and make why? you feel better, Ty. Wait. But listen. <sighs> Another satisfied customer. Now he feels better, and I feel better too. Knowing that I helped him with, um. With, uh, whatever his problem was. Maybe I should have been paying more attention. Whoops. Well, that reminds me of today's Bible story. It's about two sisters who had a very special visitor at their house. But only one sister gave their full attention. I guess I could try that. Hmm. Uh Uh-oh. No. Out of water. But no. My voice. No. Hello. No. I'm Ailey. Hello. Hello. No. You're listening to Caleb now. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Everywhere Jesus went, he said and did things that seemed to turn the world upside down. I praise you, Father. You have hidden these things from wise and educated people, but you have shown them to little children. Jesus taught that who you were mattered less than how you treated others. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He told the story of an injured man and how two people from the church ignored him. Instead, a distrusted foreigner helped the hurt man. Which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The one who felt sorry for him. Go and do as he did. Jesus once again turned things inside out when he and his closest friends arrived at the village of Bethany. A woman named Martha and her sister Mary invited Jesus into their home. Come in, come in. You must be so tired from the journey. Would you like a cup of water? Maybe some barley crackers or figs? Um, Have a seat right here. There's just a little bit of a breeze. As Jesus and his disciples found a place to rest, Martha made a beeline to the kitchen area to finish dinner. Lamb, of course. Oh, and pigeon. I do wish we'd had a little more warning that Jesus was coming. Uh, Mary, could you? Mary? As she finally glanced up from the dough she was kneading, Martha realized that Mary hadn't followed her. Where is that girl? Looking back, Martha realized that Mary had taken a seat on the floor near Jesus' feet. She fixed her eyes on Jesus, listening to every word he spoke. She knows perfectly well I need help. It'll take me to midnight to fix this meal all by myself. Martha stared hard at the back of Mary's head, but her sister didn't turn around. Martha gave the bread she was kneading an extra punch. It was her idea to make three kinds of bread. 
Now here I am doing it. As Martha checked the lamb to make sure it was cooking properly, she strained to hear what Jesus was saying. I'd like to listen too, uh, but I know what has to be done. Martha moved even more quickly, plating dried fruit and shoving loaves of bread into the clay oven. Mary's not ignoring me on purpose. She's, she's just focused. That's the way she is. I should just let it go. I will let it go. It doesn't bother me. Not at all. I'm totally fine. I don't need any help anyway. I... Ugh! Martha couldn't take it anymore. She slammed down her wooden spoon and stalked towards the group around Jesus, wiping her hands on her apron. Jesus! Conversation ground to a halt. Everyone stared at Martha. She swallowed hard, but she plunged ahead. Lord, my sister has left me to do the work by myself. Don't you care? Tell her to help me. Jesus studied Martha with deep compassion in his eyes. He knew that she was trying her best to make sure the whole group was fed, but he saw everything that was in her heart. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. Martha probably wanted to protest. Well, someone has to worry about all the things or no one will eat. But few things are needed. Really only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus' words were clear. Though Martha's work was important, nothing mattered more than spending time with Jesus. We don't know how Martha responded, but we do know that Jesus never shamed people. Instead, he showed them a better way to live. Martha took a deep breath. Yes, Lord. Maybe Martha returned to the cooking area right away. Or maybe she too took a few minutes to sit down and listen to Jesus. Either way, we know Martha later showed great love for Jesus and even trusted him when her brother became ill. In fact, Martha became witness to one of Jesus' greatest acts of love and power. And just when I think I thought my last thought, I think another one. But I can't really focus on any of them because of that cat that keeps singing outside my window. Hey, maybe that's why I can't sleep at night. Do you think it's the cat? I bet you're right. It's the cat. <laughs> wow. Thanks a lot for helping me figure that out, Haley. You're a really good listener. You're welcome. Talk to you later. What do you know? <clears throat> what do you know? What do you know? It doesn't matter if I have a calm, soothing radio voice. It's not my voice people are calling for. It's my ears. Sometimes, if you want to love someone, all you have to do is pay attention. <laughs> Listen. Give them your time. Time is something that's really important to God. Since the very beginning of time, God knew he was going to send his son to be the savior of the world. But he didn't send him right away. Instead, he waited until just the right time in history to send us Jesus. Mary and Martha had a wonderful opportunity to spend their time listening and learning from Jesus. Mary took the opportunity. Martha was too busy. Not that there's anything wrong with working hard and being busy, but sometimes if you want to show someone you love them, you should stop what you're doing and spend time with them. That means putting down whatever electronic device you're holding and turning your eyes and ears toward another person. It could mean giving someone a hand or playing the game they want to play. It could mean having a conversation. It could mean saying nothing at all. You pay attention. Isn't that how you want to be treated? I'll answer for you. Yes. So here's the one thing to remember today. Love others with your time. You may not have a soothing radio voice. That was scary. But you have as much time as everyone else. So why not use it to show someone they matter to you? Oh, another caller. I will see you next time. Go ahead, caller. I'm all ears. <laughs> Whew. Sound like my granny. <laughs> <laughs>